Today, on You're Watching a Movie with Silas Lindenstein. It's a film club, holiday edition, and I'm joined by my good friend Nick Roseman to talk about my favorite film of all time, It's a Wonderful Life. You're watching a movie with Silas Lindenstein in the theaters you find us. So Hello, everybody, and welcome to You're Watching a Movie with Silas Lindenstein. I am your host, Silas Lindenstein. Welcome. It's a film club edition, and it's a holiday edition of a film club edition. And I was joined by my friend Nick Roseman to talk about It's a Wonderful Life, one of my favorite films, if not my favorite film of all time. Uh, Certainly top Christmas movie, I think. But just as a film, I think it's wonderful. Now, uh, Nick is a longtime friend from stand-up comedy. We lift drivers together, did a lot, lot of things together with Nick, uh, played magic, done lots of things. Once you played magic with somebody, you have a, a bond for life, I believe. And when I put the shout out saying, hey, favorite holiday films, Nick said it's a wonderful life. And I'm like, I got to grab him. So um, this 1946 classic, I get into it. We discuss it fully in here. So if you haven't seen it yet, I always suggest for film club. That might be one where you go watch it first because it is full of spoilers. And then you can share in it, share in the discussion in your head. Like imagine this is a book club, but better because it's films, right? So do that if you would like. Uh, In the meantime, if you could hit the subscribe button, if you like the video or uh, uh, leave a comment even better or share with your friends and, or Hey, suggest a movie that you would like to discuss on film club. So, you know, reach out to me if you know how to get, if you know, you know. Okay. Um, but yeah, here we are. Holiday edition film club. It's a wonderful life. Well, who are you? I told you, George, I'm your guardian angel. What is it you want, Mary? You, you want the moon? Just say the word and I'll throw a lasso around it and pull it down. Welcome home, Mr. Bailey. Santa Mandel Hogwash. I wish I had a million dollars. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Martini, welcome home. This is what I wished for. You see, George, you really had a wonderful life. Yeah! Merry Christmas! That's right. That's right. Nick. Nick Rossman. Roseman. Nick Roseman. It's almost like we just discussed it seconds ago. Hey, um, it was, I, I don't know, serendipity? I don't know if it's the right word for this, but when I put a call out saying, hey, uh, I want to know people's favorite holiday films because I wanted to like, knock out a bunch of film clubs so by the way welcome to film club uh where we where we talk about film i haven't seen it yeah film club uh and you shot back uh said it's a wonderful life and i was like both like my heart leaped a little because i i feel like it's only a film for old people like myself or and and the, the, to know that people younger than me st- like like the film because it is n- it is not just one of my favorite christmas movies it is possibly my favorite movie of of all yes uh it, it even begs the question like it's a it's a christmas people will question hey die hard's a christmas movie is it a christmas movie <laughs> takes place on christmas this is a christmas movie it doesn't even really talk about Christmas hardly at all. Like it's barely mentioned. It just happens to take place. Part of it. No, that's no, is that a holiday thing? There's a tree. Actually it's past hall. Actually it's past Christmas. Isn't it New Year's Eve? Literally. I think it is New Year's at the very final scene where they just still have the Christmas tree up. But the day. Yeah. What you, which is proper. You should. Yeah. Don't take it till New Year's Eve, the New Year's day. You dispose of it on January 2nd, and if you miss that date, you wait until Easter. Amen. That's so it dries out, and you can throw it in your own fireplace. That's the other option. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
Be, uh, what my favorite film and folks if you haven't i mean most people have heard of it's a wonderful life um uh, real quick uh it's uh directed by frank capra screenplay uh by francis goodrick albert hackett frank capra uh additional scenes by joe swirling so i guess somebody was like you know what there's a few scenes uh one scene sucks but we're gonna give it to joe um uh, starring uh, James Stewart and Donna Reed, uh, they're the bi- they're the big names in it that that lived on. Um, oh, it's God. a 1946 American Christmas supernatural drama film. Wikipedia <laughs> calls it. I've never heard it called a supernatural film, but it's a Christmas supernatural drama film. Uh, it's based on a short story and booklet, "The Greatest Gift," self published, self published. It was by a- Philip Van Doren Stern. So all you self-publishers out there, you have hope. Uh, it, it, it literally started as a greeting card. He sent out 200 to really? his family, and one screenwriter read it and got his hands on it. It was like, this will make a fantastic film. And that's how it became. It's all, uh, Frank, what was his last name, the, the director? Capra. Frank, Frank Capra funded it solely. It's It's one of his, I think he only had two or three movies. But it was his passion. He loved oh it, God. and he put his life into this movie. So the the plot, George Bailey has so many problems, he is thinking about ending it all. And it's Christmas. Okay, it's Christmas. <laughs> As the angels discuss George, we see his life in flashback. As George is about to jump from the bridge, he ends up, rescue, ends up rescuing his guardian angel, Clarence, who then shows George what his town would have looked like if it hadn't been for all his good deeds over the years. Uh, Wikipedia wanted to say that it was also like loosely based on a Christmas Carol. Uh, I don't know, a little bit maybe. So, uh, so actually, that's that's my one note is that is the best telling of a Christmas Carol style. Do you right? think it is? Just because he goes back? Yeah, not 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 in the in the I am wealthy and I can make an impact sense, but in what does the soul of a man mean what 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 impact do we have when we don't have the money when we can't give our friends everything they need when we're just there it's so easy to devalue that and be like i i've done nothing for these people but the movie really shows the impact of just being there for your community and people and that's it warms my heart it yes I love that. I love the, I love that part. I love my it has it has I think the best scene in cinema history. Oh, I'm the so best, which one. Cuz there are so the, many great ones. The scene that they um him and uh his wife, well, future wife, um uh what's her name? Donna um, something. No, Donna's a real life. Oh, well, the, in the movie, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't. Um, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, please find it because I, I want to know. <laughs> no, now I'm gonna die if I don't. Uh, George, Mary, 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 Mary. Of course, Mary. So the scene that he is on the phone, uh, him and Mary are at the phone and they're talking about plastics to it, and the guy's trying to sign him up, and he's like, "And you got to take a chance. Come on, George, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity." And they're staring at each other, and there's this whole, this whole unscripted, unworded monologue happening between the two about all their their entire relationship is being kind of discussed with them looking at each other and then he throws the phone down and is like I don't want a plastics I don't want a, I don't want to fall in love and I don't want to have kids you know like it's just it's, it's, oh, it's Mary Mary and that kiss that kiss is like it's one of my favorite kisses in cinema and it's such a shitty kid <laughs> <laughs> he like rubs his face on her <laughs> he's got rash a rash from it it's it's so intimate but it, it shows oh, that scene so much yeah it's my favorite it scene the decision point of his life where he's like i could abandon what my father stood for what the uh, loan and bank stands for and go and be a successful person in the world or i can really follow that heart and be with yeah. this woman who i have this uncontrollable love for like she's holding me back but it's what it is all about, you know. She's a little, she's a little young for him, though. 
literally it's problematic. Well. I mean, at least she's at least she's <laughs> after college, right? Yeah. This is after college. We love that other scene when he goes there and he's like uh at the dance, he's at the dance with at her. The high school dance. At the high school dance, like and everyone's fine with it. Everyone's like, oh sure, a 28-year-old man should be hanging out at the dance with this girl. Oh, it's just George Bailey. <laughs> oh, just George Bailey. He's sex <laughs> with all the high school. He cuts in and bumps out Al- Alfalfa, the, f- the same character who plays Alfalfa. Really? Yeah, yeah. It's the same actor who oh gets God. pushed aside so he can dance with Mary <laughs> for oh. the contest. <laughs> so Alfalfa presses the button? Yeah, Alfalfa was the one who opened up the pool. Oh, the other love scene is the the Buffalo Bill. Won't you come out tonight dancing around the uh, the Buffalo bush girls. and hiding in there? Buffalo girls and, and, and the oh. house with the wishes. Yeah, I, I, badly I, I, edited, by the way. Like <laughs> abrupt, abrupt cuts that are like well jarring. Like, boy, the editor didn't have a smooth transition point in this. Where was the third camera? Where was the third <laughs> camera in 1940, whatever? And, and what I think is amazing about this, there's so many like little their flaws to the editing and the even cinematography and weird special effects of but it stands up. I like I, I constantly. Think I think the most important part is they really emphasize the emotion. Uh, the the scene that I think about that that has like one of the more jarring effects on me is uh, he's praying in uh, Nick Nikolai or Nikki's bar, mm-hmm. Nick's bar maybe, uh, and he he's literally losing it and just praying, and it zooms in on his face, but it gets grainier because they didn't zoom in with the camera; they zoomed in in post, and <laughs> it just blew up an old. There are times he does look absolutely insane. Well, oh, it's like all... he's like, oh, oh my gosh, people, I'm gonna go to jail. Look, that, look, that's, that's what you would think, right? That's how you would act if you lost. I mean, what is eight thousand dollars in twenty? Well, it's crazy. He didn't even lose it. Like, I don't think he was only. But crazy to me is he was only going to jail because he knew he was not going to let someone else. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Because he could just been like this fucking idiot who can't find his. His own, uh, with the he ring. can't find anything. He's a string. Yeah, he lost the money. And he, I got lose the money. If, if you looked at his house when they showed his house, he had like a raccoon. He had crows. He had all these wilderness animals. <laughs> Clearly, let your uncle go to the penitentiary. Okay? Right. I also get like why they were like, well, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna give it up because I got to because I'm George Bailey, so yeah. I'm gonna go to jail. Like, what, what trust in the criminal justice system, too, that they're going to, you don't think no one's going to ask you, do you have an idea what happened? And he's going to go, well, yeah, he lost it, but I should go to jail still. I'm responsible. Like, what? What the hell is he afraid? But that's um, the character, man. That's George Bailey. That's 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 him refusing to deliver poison to the kid in the opening in one of those opening scenes. Because he can't, you're upset, man. It was a poison. You know, people poison in it. Another how did you know? insane thing. How did, you, how did you know it was poison? That poison. Kind of, who sells poison with giant capsules. bottles? Oh Why did the pharmacists have poison in capsule form? I was like, far, I know for, I know drugstores carried a lot of stuff. Ice cream, milk. And then they had rat poison right next to penicillin. In capsule form. Just, <laughs> just <laughs> capsule form. They put it in capsules for human to swallow. <laughs> uh, I, did, I think he did cut it and do it, but, but well, well. So, so, so the thing is that uh, that that scene, the pharmacist was actually drunk, and the blood coming out of his ear was yeah. real blood because he slapped the kid actor so hard, hard, yeah, that it, it genuinely started bleeding, and he just the laws, dude. Yeah, nineteen forties were were raw, <laughs> and <was> like. <laughs> This is how you act, kid. It's acting. That is ain't acting. Why is he drunk on set? You know? Wait, he was really drunk on set. He was really drunk. Yeah. Oh, so he was like, he was a method acting motherfucker in the fucking role, man. His son died of what influenza or what? The Spanish. Yeah. Because <laughs> I think it was 1919 when he got that letter. Yeah. 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 He. Uh, but. I think like all of the the first act of the movie is George Bailey's life, and I think that's what we're missing in other Christmas Carol tales. Is why do we care about Ebenezer Scrooge? I don't, I, you know, when you actually like the lore of Scrooge. Is- well, 
But I mean, I want... reason, yeah, you have to go back to see that he was sympathetic at one point. Exactly. And the, um, up in, uh, at the start, you don't care. You're like this old croon. Why is he getting a second chance? You know, you're not on the Scrooge's side. But with George Bailey, you're like he did. He tried to be the what what an upstanding man should be. You know, he mm-hmm. lived true to his his spirit and what his father, I guess, because he, he really references his dad a lot because he took over the building alone. Yeah. Uh, but he really stresses that that. I'm living this authentic life and being right. And Mr. Potter being the greedy capitalist, really showing you that other side of like money and profit and, you know, put them in the slums. Who cares? You know, just as long as they're paying their rent each month, that's, that's the important part. Right. And he just was like, no, these are, these are my people. These are my neighbors. These are my, my my friends. I'm going to help to get them in a house if I can. And you know, showing getting into Martinez's house with his thirteen kids and a goat, or whatever yeah. <laughs> was so. By the way, okay, people know on the channel that I'm a real estate agent in real life. Um, but what's funny is when I became a real estate agent, I thought I was going to be super original, and I was like, "Well, my favorite movie, it's a Wonderful Life." So when people's house closed, I got them a bottle of wine big thing of salt and and some bread and i would say the same thing to them and i was thought i was clever and i was on like a network meeting with other agents and they're like yeah everybody's done that that's pretty it's a pretty common gift i was like what for real i thought i was the first but i thought i was the only one who saw the famous movie <laughs> it's only it's been real- 70 years at this point <laughs> okay okay i guess i'll Get someone out. Um, I'll get them a home warranty or something. Yeah, right. We we just replace it with like Walmart goods and uh, <laughs> and a new uh, insurance. I always liked it. Now I give people soy sauce. There you go. Expensive soy sauce. And by the way, anyone listening, expensive soy sauce will change your life. When you had taste, mommy. when you taste soy sauce that costs thirty dollars. You have understood what the nectar of the gods is in with a sodium product. Okay. It's a mild flavor and it's so tasty. Okay. That's my, I, I, I can't go too far. I'm, I'm married to a Korean gal and the life before, like authentic Asian food and her mom sending us home with bulgogi. And now you're like, this is a wonderful life. I mean, this is, <laughs> that's all I was missing, man. It was a Korean in law. Korean in law. <laughs> Um, Mary, Mary oh. was Mary insane? Like, why do you? She could have had anybody. Like, she waited for this college guy. Why like, she wants to stay at home? Like, she doesn't want to do anything. Like, is college? That if George Bailey didn't exist, she would have became a librarian. Well, I, I I don't know. If is that character- just male? Is that a male gaze? Is it, I, is that the male fantasy? That do you think that's actually her life? That no man could have pleased her. I feel like it was the 1950s life was like this. Like if if you're not gonna fall in love with the man you love, then you're just gonna become an old hag. <laughs> You'll never no. find love. Oh, no, I don't. You can't find. Don't see Mary. No, what happened to her? Is she crippled? No, worse. She's an old maid. <laughs> like, oh no! Oh, I was like, oh my god, what happened to her? The first time I saw it, like he goes like, was like, I had a hot college dude. boyfriend who was b- blowing up in the plastics industry. Why did she return without George Bailey? If there's no George Bailey, does she come back to uh, whatever? Not Potterville, but <laughs> well, she comes and becomes a librarian. Yeah, yeah. In what? Potterville, in Potterville, <laughs> the one with all the strip clubs next door, <laughs> and the guy claims uh, well, some. Then a crazy guy comes in and says, "I'm your husband," and she's like, ah! she freaks out. She's gonna die. What a crazy madman! I of course would never be married. I'm a hot. I'm the hot librarian. I'm waiting for a guy to come through here trying to sell trumpets in a Hallmark then, movie to show me the meaning of Christmas. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. I don't know about her like life becoming. I just, I just it's funny that well, becoming an old maid was the worst thing. That, that Not was, getting married. Oh my god! 
Like, why shouldn't you just kill herself? No amputation, no addiction, just old and unmarried. That was that was without the- George Bailey. The the uh, the easy girl just became a full on easy girl, huh? The other one, what was her name? <laughs> oh, oh yeah, what's her name? Uh, God, Mary. No, no, it's something Lou, right? I feel like it. Yeah, out. And the, and from and I just love it that she's like a little like little, like strumpet from the moment she's like a kid. She's like. Mm, look at that George Bailey. Mm. Hey man, six years old or in a six years old. I'm 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 going for that. <laughs> oh yeah, she had to he was in high he was working there like at 14, right? Yeah, why he was he child labor laws must have not been around because he was running that pharmacy at 12, 13. <laughs> so at best, how old what's the age difference between them? I think only like six to ten years. Well, I'm just thinking, like, well, wait, she was like, flirt. She's like, I'm going to marry him. Yeah. I'm she spend was... the rest of my life with this teenager. And she's like, a set eight year old, like in the malt. No, I, I, I feel like she, well, she was, was it only four years? Class, Is it four right? years? Huh? She was in her, uh, George Bailey's little brother's class. So I don't think they were too far separated because okay. he was still going to high been, school parties, right? Who been four then? I, I, years yeah i mean still too much yeah but man we're we're talking fifth in the 50s right like but basically his little dot do- his daughter playing the piano should already be playing in the love of her life hey man Susan's whispering in the new mouth boys here. <laughs> <laughs> uh but yeah no the the, the beauty of like uh, taking that old house and having their honeymoon in it, it it really, in me, it embedded this meaning of regardless of scenario, regardless of how beautiful your house is or how successful you are, the love of that you share with somebody deeply meaningful will surpass every financial milestone I ever get to, you know? <laughs> Do you think is this a film that you do think about? I do, I do. I I watch it once a year. I don't yeah. watch it more than that. I watch it New Year's Eve after the world's gone to bed, about ten p.m., eleven p.m. Oh, on New Year's, so it's like a New Year's Eve film or right? Christmas Eve, Christmas Eve. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, and it it just it reminds me of what I think the spirit of Christmas is really representing. I I grew up pretty poor. I mean, not not. Mm-hmm. Uh, not starving poor, but we made a lot of pancakes growing up, you know? Yeah. And it it really taught me a lot or like made me think a lot about, like I said, the the impact. I feel like I can't always buy the nicest presents for my friends. I feel like I can't always provide financial. This is how much you mean to me because I don't got that much, you know, <laughs> but I do have my heart and I do have that impact of telling the people who matter to me what they mean to me for the fact that at least that's what I can give them is a a reminder that we're here and you've made my life better. And I think that that's really the Christmas attitude of the movie is regardless of what you give being there Christmas day is the real impactful thing you can do and it always flips my mood i've i've been literally bankrupt watched the movie gone to a 24 hour i think it was walmart and bought a bunch of five dollar treats for my dogs to give my wife uh uh she didn't expect it but i wrapped them all and i gave her a present and she was like oh it's it's christmas morning she had that moment and that's meant more to me than any christmas i've had in since adulthood you know yeah. that's my christmas in my mind and it's just it's just being there with the people you love and sharing i, I can't do much but this is what i can do no the no man is a failure who has friends uh, right? what a line what a it's, line i think that is the big thing that stuck with me is i've tried to always think that that's true yeah is but oh but i got but i got friends right so hopefully I, like oh would they i always wonder like i mean i can't help i don't know if this is common amongst people but i'm always like so if i was gonna go to jail would they step up for me would someone go around and collect the dollars 
Yeah, where's the bail coming from? You know, <laughs> would my would my one uh, token black friend who's like a mage show up and give me all the money in case she, in case she ever got a husband? I say this in case I ever got a husband. This is like one of the few films I could probably quote the whole thing. Dude, I what does you want, Mary? I do a terrible George Bailey accent, but I do it for my wife at least four or five times a year. And she's like, that is not how he sounds. <laughs> you, want, oh. you want the moon? I'll throw a lasso around it and bring it down here. <laughs> what? So the, um, when I first discovered the film, oh, I thought it was so boring. The first, the first time I watched it, I thought it was so boring. I probably didn't watch all of it. To be like, honest, the first act, it's it you work through that first act. It's not I don't think I watched it till college. Like <laughs> that I actually and my grandpa played it. It was on all the time because they had TBS. And it was like 1986-ish that I first saw the movie existed. Mm -hmm. And back then was the big controversy of uh Ted Turner colorizing all these black and white films. And it was like a oh. It's a Wonderful Life, now in color. Color. Right? I and so, color, for way. years, <laughs> like, I would see that, the choice, and then, like, I knew when I bought it, and I had the choice to, when I'm buying the film, was like, because you can buy it in color. Yeah, yeah. But I bought the black and white, like a like a real man. Why, why do you think that is? Why do you think the black and white, I feel like, tells a more honest version? Well, I think the problem is, well, part of it is, when things were shot in black and white, we know things were shot in, you, you shoot things in different angles and in different lighting and different things when you know it's going to be in black and white. You make choices. So I think it, as much as you even correct, I mean, because they do go and correct things and go like, well, they wouldn't have worn that color. <laughs> right, so they make it a different color than what it, they can figure out it was, but I I just think that you, uh, if they knew they could do it in color, the film would be shot differently. Yeah, and so that's why I think things just look a little off when they yeah. are put into color, because you're like, oh no, that's not how it was. That's meant to be shot. Planned, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I mean, this is I've I've argued about this all the time, like. This is a beautiful film because I think films in their core have to like have a good and have to have a good story and the acting has to be good and you you know and and if it's and and when you didn't have special effects <laughs> and you didn't have the spectacle part of it you had to have the story and the acting had to be there yeah and so a film like this it's all story and it's all character and film. And so it's a great story. It's like when they remade Red Dawn, I always talk about that. Uh huh. The remake of Red Dawn is god awful. It's so because, bad. Because they didn't have to worry because they're like, oh, we can just blow shit up. Let's yeah, just blow yeah. everything up. It'll be really cool. And I'm like, well, yeah. But back when they first made this, they didn't have much of a budget. So they had to be creative and you had to work on a, on a good script because it wasn't just about. Things go exactly. boom, boom, and sell into the international audience. You can't like show a clip show of Red Dawn, you know, like like it's it's not good in the top ten high best scenes of Red Dawn. No, you know? no, it's it's really an experience of watching the whole movie and being yeah. with characters. You and know? it's a character development piece, and it's yeah. not an action film. And the, re the the remake tried to make it an action film, and that's just exactly. that's not what it was. There was it's a like, remake of It's a Wonderful Life that I think lost so much of it because... Was it, it's, it's a Wonderful Knife, the new one? <laughs> no, no, no. The, the, There's a horror film that just came out called It's a Wonderful <laughs> Knife. Which is the same story with more murder. <laughs> <laughs> I need to look... I'm not joking. I just don't, oh, I've I don't seen know it. what the plot is, but... The plot, there, it's just... A, it's a silly horror. It's was there... It's but there was a remake of It's a Wonderful Life? No, no. It, oh, it, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> uh, but but it's a wonderful life had those authentic moments. That kiss that you talked about, the the prayer, it these raw moments of just humanity, just George Bailey coping with Clarence coming down and him being like, 
no, you're not an angel. Like, like, like the the realism of every moment that led to George Bailey wanting to commit suicide to save his family. Again, he was weighing uh, this will give the money so nobody will suffer. Yeah. Versus what 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 am I giving to the world? And he was like, I, I can't offer more than this ten thousand dollar life insurance policy. Yeah. This is the important thing. This is what my life is worth. And and like I don't know. I I, I know me. I've suffered with that moment of a life insurance looks better than what I'm bringing bringing yeah. in. But the 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 like reassurance that. There's more. You're you're impacting more than you realize. Mm-hmm. Has just always sat so deep in my heart, and that's what makes this one of. I'd probably say top five. I don't know if it breaks the top three, but it's definitely one of my top five favorite films. Period. It's. It just it, it gives me something. I mean, even the poster, looking at it in your background, yeah. is. It it just gives you some sort of hope. And I had, I don't I, even want my kids to watch this movie until they like. I think they'll appreciate it. Yeah, I'm like I don't want you looking at it like it's like oh look at the old movie. I watch it like I said after my wife goes to bed after every the world is asleep. Yeah, that's when I watch it is because it's just me absorbing a reminder of what's important, and that's it, it speaks so much. I just. I'm and I, I also appreciate that it is a Christmas movie that does not make any reference to religion. Well, the beginning is this. Well, you, okay. The the angels. Angels. <laughs> they have like the twinkling stars. The angels, I guess. Yeah. On no, Christmas no, no. Eve, but he can't do that. Oh, doesn't he know? Does he know? <laughs> Joseph. That would be a sin. Well, I mean, but, but most of the movie, it's not like, uh, yeah, it's yeah, not yeah, full yeah. of Jesus references. It's not. They barely mention Christmas in it. Yeah. Like, is that, it's just like a movie. It's just a movie. And I love that the, there's a Christmas movie that takes place there, but doesn't really talk about it. And the fact that Die Hard definitely mentions Christmas way more <laughs> than It's a Wonderful Life does. Yeah, yeah. You would have a better time arguing that Die Hard's a Christmas movie, but It's a Wonderful Life encapsulates what I think we try to meet, make Christmas represent. You know, it's... It, it, yeah. it, not a single gift was opened. Not a single. I mean, I, I just watched Turbo or not Turbo Man, Jingle All the Way, where Arnold Schwarzenegger plays Turbo Man, and he's worried about getting his son the present. But and that's like a major plot point. There's no present. He's not no present. getting his wife. They live in a rusty shack that she broke the window of on their first kiss. You know. Yeah. Uh, but it's together we will build a life worth loving and i just it, every year it melts my heart it's, <laughs> it's the only christmas movie that genuinely puts me in a christmas mood mm. elf oh is God. good if only I had my own if only I had my own uh senior in high school that was caught in a bush without uh any clothes on and i was completely oh, nude this is uh <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll tell wow. your mother she'd be on my side actually what a predicament to that find oh, herself in not, not every day a fella finds himself in this sort of situation uh, don't you? <laughs> I do say like movies like that also uh, in the negative I, I talk about like movies like this that had full grown adults in their 30s playing high school people definitely also made my sense of what a high school girl should look like really skewed. Yeah, yeah, the, the like idea of maturity almost. I just can't even like, no, I'm fi- I'm almost 50 here and I'm like high school girls, they might as well be in elementary school. They look the same to me. I I I and I'm have, like and then you got this 30-year-old bus. woman playing Yeah, I have a high school bus that picks out outside my apartment complex that I pass every day. And I, I I have to remind myself that they're high schoolers because they they're they're trying to be high schoolers and I see that, but they're children. Yeah, they're just wee babes. <laughs> I don't like oh oh she's in high school. Okay, fine. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. Uh, it's uh it's 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 definitely jarring through the lens of modern day. <laughs> but 
you know, I remember that my grandparents are almost 10 years apart, married young. And I'm like, okay, maybe it was just the 50s. <laughs> my grandma it was inappropriate. So, it was, yeah, no, I got that. Yes, all grandma was gaslit into well, the marriage, but it was worth it because I'm here now. <laughs> I am 11 years old senior to my wife, but I did not meet her till she was after college. So, <laughs> yeah, it's okay. That's what I tell myself and and tell the court and the judge. (laughs) Everybody, I think it was okay. Um, Hey, Nick, um, I want to thank you for coming by uh, for Fight Club. This is great to chat about this movie. Um, I'm going to run the trailer for the movie when we uh, are done here so people can check that out and hopefully inspire them to go watch It's a Wonderful Life. It's available everywhere you stream. You can get buy it on DVD, whatever. I recommend the co- the black and white version. Don't go for the color. Just it's, don't do it. It's um, better. <laughs> and I hope people can appreciate why it is my one of my favorite films besides my favorite Christmas. Yeah, movie. if if you make it this far, please do yourself the favor of watching the movie. It's it it really doesn't matter what you go in with expectation wise. If you genuinely give it your attention, you're gonna get something back. Yeah. Uh, before we completely wrap up the line when he's pleading with Mr. Potter he's like Potter $5,000 do you know how long it takes the working man to save that long hasn't <laughs> aged has not aged 70 oh years later God. it still takes more than a year to save $5,000 yeah. <laughs> and that's not a down payment anymore so. no no it is not <laughs> This, uh, yes, it's a it's a film as relevant today as it was back then. Yeah, so yeah exactly. Nothing's still changed. Five thousand dollars away. Right. <laughs> well, thanks uh, for having me, on, man. I really. Well, thank you, Nick. Uh, th- thank you uh, for recommending this film, and thank you for watching a movie with Silas Lindenstein. You're watching a movie with Silas Lindenstein in the theaters. You find this, so go and press play and rewind this. this speech it is time. Love it, like it, or we lose it, can't find it And we ain't keen on being reminded About the film, if it isn't tough We spend a lot of time at the cinema It's just me and my friends, we watch plenty stuff For movies, yeah, I've been above Whether big or they small, no, for me Don't make a difference, love them You're watching the movie with silence When it's dying in the theaters, you find us So go and press play and rewind us This picture is timeless Love it, like it, or we lose it, can't find it And we ain't keen on being reminded About the film, if it didn't hit No Gotta lose it Watch movies with my friends Bringing joy That's the blueprint So come on in Let's do this yeah. They pain behind us And relax your mind Come watch a movie With Silas Yeah, yeah.